Hi, I'm Michael Weber, Artistic Director of Chicago's Porchlight Music Theater. Opening in movie theaters March 22, 1940, The Bluebird, with a screenplay by Walter Bullock, adapted from the 1908 play of the same name by Maurice Matterlink, was intended as 20th Century Fox's answer to MGM's The Wizard of Oz, which had been released the previous year. Despite being a box office flop and losing money in its initial release, the film was nominated for two Academy Awards and benefited greatly from the presence of the extraordinary artist known as Shirley Temple. Author Maurice Matterlink's hugely popular play premiered on September 30, 1908 at Konstantin Stanislavski's Moscow Art Theater, and it was presented on Broadway in 1910. The play has been adapted for several films and TV series. In fact, it has been made into a motion picture six times between 1910 and 2011. There has been an opera adaptation as well as a novelization, and Walt Disney was one of the many producers who considered filming a remake. The story is about a girl named Meetal and her brother, Tiltil, seeking joy in life, represented by the Blue Bird of Happiness, who is aided by a good fairy. There's a myth that Shirley Temple was to be cast in The Wizard of Oz. However, this is mostly untrue. She was considered, but only very briefly. Executives at MGM wanted Temple because she was a proven box office draw, but producer Arthur Freed wanted the role of Dorothy to go to rising child star Judy Garland. When producers listened to Temple sing, they were immediately unimpressed with her vocal talents, and even if they were ready to offer her the role, Fox refused to loan her out. When Oz became a success and shot Judy Garland to fame, Fox decided to create their own fantasy feature using their contract player, Shirley Temple. One bit of trivia that was true was that actor Gail Sondergaard, who was originally cast as the Wicked Witch in The Wizard of Oz, opted in a mutual decision with MGM to exit the film, eventually taking the glamorous role of Tillit the Cat in The Bluebird. In imitation of The Wizard of Oz, the opening scenes of The Bluebird are in black and white, although the opening credits are in color. But unlike Oz, once the film changes to full color, it stays that way for the remainder of its running time. The relationship between the Temple family and Fox Studio head Daryl F. Zanuck was tense during production and reached a boiling point during the writing stage, as Shirley's mother objected first to Shirley's characterization as too nice in comparison to the characterization in the play. And then she had concerns about the script not being focused enough on Shirley. Things came to a head when Zanuck threatened suspension. After consulting their lawyer, the Temples decided to go forward with the movie as planned. While it's well known that The Wizard of Oz struggled at the box office in its initial release, The Bluebird fared somewhat worse. It was Shirley Temple's first box office flop in her six years as a child star. Audiences disliked the idea of Temple as a nasty character needing to learn a lesson. While many of Temple's earlier films show her misbehaving in various ways, this is the only one to show her truly being punished, when early in the film, her brattiness earns her a reprimand from her mother. Regardless of whether the film was a hit in its premiere, the story remains a perennial favorite, and here on the airwaves, Shirley Temple reminds us all why she was the most popular performer in the entire world in this, her first ever appearance on network radio. From December 24th, 1939, in a preview production prior to the film's release, here is Nelson Eddy as guest host of the Screen Guild Theater, starring Shirley Temple in The Bluebird. Miss Shirley Temple. Thank you, 
Mr. Eddy. What do I do now? Well, anything you say, Shirley, it's your program. But if I might make a suggestion as one singer to another, how about a song? All right, Mr. Eddy, I'll sing. Someday you'll find your bluebird. Good. Someday you'll find your bluebird. Wait your turn. Bide your time. For when you find your bluebird, life will be so sublime. It may be right near you, or maybe worlds apart. When love comes, you'll find it on the windowsill of your heart. And then you'll hear your bluebird sing a song of happiness to you. Some 30 years ago, the famous Belgian author Maurice Maeterlinck wrote a play and called it The Bluebird. It must have carried a message the world sorely needed, for within a few years it was known and loved in every corner of the earth, by young and old alike. It's been acted in every country, in every language, and on almost every stage, until to the whole world the bluebird has come to be the symbol of happiness. And now it's been brought to the screen by Daryl Zanuck and 20th Century Fox as the most magnificent and spectacular technicolor production of the year, with Shirley Temple in the role of Meetel. And tonight, at this very moment in faraway France, Maurice Maeterlinck, now 77 years old, is seated at his shortwave radio, waiting to hear Shirley Temple bring his immortal story to life again. Did you like working in the Bluebird, Shirley? Oh, yes, Mr. Pryor. I loved it. Better than any picture I was ever in, I think. Do you know the Bluebird, Mr. Pryor? Oh, of course. It's the story of Meetle and Tiltil, a girl and boy who lived over a hundred years ago, if I remember correctly. Do you remember, all right? And do you remember the Royal Forest? That's where the story begins. Oh, it was beautiful. The most beautiful forest I've ever seen. The green pine trees were all glistening with snow. Oh, there was lots of snow, because it was the day before Christmas. And I remember my brother, Tiltil, and I were walking through the forest. The birds were singing all around us. They were very happy, because no one was supposed to hunt them in the royal forest. But I did. I guess I wasn't a very nice little girl. Tiltil and I set a trap. And then we hid behind a tree. And pretty soon, a little thrush came to eat the crumbs we'd spread. He came closer and closer. And there, we had him in the trap. And all the other birds flew right away. We were pretty excited, too. But suddenly, we heard a horn. It was a royal forester. He waved his hand and shouted at us. And I yelled, Come on, Tiltil. Run, run. It's the royal forester. And we did run, too. All the way back to the village. We didn't slow down till we were passing Angela's house. It wasn't much of a house, because Angela's mother was very poor, and Angela was sick and lying in bed near the window. I guess she wondered what we were carrying in the basket, because she opened the window and called to us. Meetle? Oh, Meetle. Oh, hello, Angela. What have you got in the basket, Meetle? Something for Christmas? It's a bird. A very rare bird. It's a thrush, we think. I trapped it in the royal forest. Oh, I've always wanted a bird like that. I don't suppose you wouldn't give it to me, would you? I should say not. I promised this bird to another little girl for Christmas. Have you? Who? Who do you suppose? Me. Come on, Tiltil. Yes, we'd better hurry. Mommy and Daddy don't like it when we're waiting for dinner. Oh, I'll show them my bird. 
And they'll forget to scold us. Where have you children been? What kept you? Look, Mummy, we caught the most beautiful bird. That's no excuse for being late to supper. Now go wash your hands. Yes, Mummy. Down, Tylo, down. Your mummy had to set the table, Meetle. Did you forget the time? You know, Daddy, I think the village clock is slow. Do you hear that, Mummy? The village clock was slow. She has eyes, hasn't she? You saw it was growing dark. Well, yes. But Angela Burlingo stopped us. I had to talk to her. She's sick, you know. Then we looked in at the rich children's house. Mm. Oh, just for a second, Daddy. Never mind all that now. Now, come on. Take your places at the table. There. We're ready for grace. For what we are about to receive, and for all thy bounteous blessings, O Lord, make us truly thankful. Amen. Amen. Me, 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 look out after your bird. Tylet, get away from there. Keep away from my bird. Get away, Tylet. And I told you, Meetle, not to trap birds in the woods. But, Daddy, it's such fun. And what do you think, Mummy? Angela wanted me to give my bird to her. Well, why didn't you? It would have been something to cheer her up. Oh, poor mite, sick in bed all winter. It's not my fault she's sick. It's your fault that you're selfish. You've got so much that she hasn't, Meetle. What have I got? Health, for one thing. What's that? And a roof over your head, warm clothes to wear. These old things. And plenty to eat. But nothing I like. Nothing good. Not like those rich children have. Cakes, candies, dolls to play with, pre-dresses, everything. I have nothing. Stop it, Meetle. Stop it at once. Why, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. I'm not ashamed. I hate it. I hate it all. Me too. Another word and you'll go straight to bed. You're an ungrateful child. I don't care. I'm so unhappy. Of course you're unhappy. If you don't mend your ways, you'll never be happy. Never. Oh, who's that? Come in. Oh, it's you, Will Hedge. Well, sit down. Have some supper with us. Thanks, but I, I have no time. I have bad news, I'm afraid. What's wrong? Orders to mobilize at once. Mobilize? Oh, no. Soldiers are on the march again. We assemble in the village square tomorrow at noon. I'll be there. Good. Till tomorrow, then. War. Oh, Daddy, I don't want you to go. I must go, dear. Why do they have to have war? What makes war anyway? The same thing that makes trouble everywhere. Greed and selfishness. Someone is not content with what they have. But you're not like that, Daddy. Why should you have to go? That's what's wrong about it, child. You can't be unhappy inside yourself without making others unhappy, too. Come. Come now, children. Be off to bed. Daddy and I have many things to do. Good night, dear. Good night. Mommy... I'm sorry for the way I behaved at supper. Yes, yes, dear. Good night. When Daddy said someone is not content, did he mean like me? Well, like you are sometimes. But I don't want to be like that, Mummy. Really, I don't. I know, I know. I don't know what makes me do it. Oh, Mummy, I'm so unhappy. Oh, there, there, dear. <laughs> you want to be happy, don't you? Yes, Mummy. Like you. You're happy all the time, aren't you? Well, nearly all the time, dear. Now go to sleep. Don't worry, Mummy. Daddy will come back. Yes. Yes, dear. Now sleep. Sleep. Come to help you find the bluebird. The bluebird? That's what I said. The bluebird. The bird that stands for happiness. You want to be happy, don't you? Of course. Get into your clothes, both of you. And be quick about it. <gasps> Look, me. You're all dressed. And so are you. Why, Tiltil? Even your boots are laced. She did it. Come, come. Don't stand there staring. There's no time to lose. 
You must find the bluebird. But where should we look for it? In the past, in the future, everywhere. But, ma'am, we're not allowed to go places alone at night. There's your dog and cat. Take them. But, but, but we'll get lost in the dark. I'll take care of that. Light, you who give beauty to the earth, appear. It's a queen. She came right out of the land, all covered with light. I am light. Come to guide you, dear little friend. Where would you like to go? We're not quite sure where to go. Darlene said we must find the bluebird. We don't know where to look. She said in the past, the future, everywhere. Perhaps we'd better start in the past. But where is the past? Light? Do you know the way? Of course. The past is just behind us. I'll show you. Come. Come. to the past lies through there. But, but, but that's a graveyard. It's the only way to the past. You must leave from here, Needle. But take heed. It is now nearly midnight. You must be back within the hour. Otherwise, you will remain in the past forever. Goodbye now. Uh, aren't you coming with us? No. Light has no business in a graveyard. But I'll be waiting for you. I'll be waiting Somebody must be thinking of us. Why, I'm beginning to feel quite strong. Ah, we're going to have visitors. They seem quite near. Ah, now I can get on with carving my little figures. I've been at this one for a whole year. That's because we're so seldom awake. Hold me tight. Then I'm not going to be a big one this time. Oh, my, my. It's been months and months now that you've forgotten. Oh, the last time. Let me see now. It it was Easter morning. The, the, the church bells were ringing. Easter? We didn't go out that day. We both had very bad cold. No, but you thought of us. Yes, we missed you. Huh? Yes, every time you think of us, we wake up and... See you again. But we thought you were dead. No, dear, no. People never die. Only when they're forgotten. Everything's the same here. The house. The yard. Oh, Granny, I'm so glad to be here. <laughs> Sit, Grandpa. Huh? There's the hole in the door I made with your gimlet. And a good spanking you got for us, too. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Grandpa. Here's where you used to measure us on the door. Needle. Let's see how much we grow. All right? My, my, how you both shot up. Till, till you're three fingers taller. <laughs> and you need to four, no, five. And how big and strong. Feel my muscle, Grandpa. Huh? Well, well. <laughs> my, Grandpa, huh? you haven't finished calling little Coco yet. Oh, what chance have I got when I'm always asleep? Come along, Tilt-Till. We'll do some work on it now in my workshop. All right, Grandpa. Don't be long, Tilt-Till. Oh, you're in no hurry. Yes, so we are. We must be back within the hour. What time is it, Granny? Now sit down. It's only half past twelve. Granny, the reason why we're here, we've got to find a bluebird. It's terribly important. A bluebird? Oh, yes, I'm sure we've got one. Really, Granny? Where? Show me. Oh, we've plenty of time for that. I I haven't had a morsel of gossip in a twelfth month. But, Granny... Tell me, did Mrs. Van Groom's daughter marry the Burgermaster? No, she didn't. Why? What happened? Mrs. Van Groom married him herself. Merciful heavens. 
Please, Granny, can we go now and see about the bluebird? All right, child, if we must. We look in the birdhouse. It's right over there. Oh, thank you, Granny. There you are, dear. Birds of all kinds. All colors. You may have any one you like. Isn't there a blue one? Yes. Yes, there's a blue one. That one up there. Singing. Why, Granny, he isn't blue. He's black. Strange. He always looked blue to me. There isn't one here. Not a single bluebird. Won't one of these do? No, no. Granny said it must be blue. She said to look everywhere. This is the past, isn't it? Yes, dear. But perhaps your bluebird isn't in the past. And you'll have to look somewhere else. I must go then. Tilt-tilt. Oh, Tilt-tilt. Needle, what do you think? These little carved figures can whistle. I know that. Come on, we've got to go. Wait, you, you can't go yet. You haven't heard my little figures whistle. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> Anything you like. You name it, Needle. Can they whistle a hymn? Oh, hymns are for Sunday. The farmer in the dell, then? Oh, who wants that silly thing? <laughs> how how would you like Lady O? <laughs> that's the only one they play. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the one I wanted anyway. Granny, you used to sing that to me in my cradle, remember? I remember. You, why, you weren't even born. Oh, that's right. I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> you sing, Meadow. Sing a happy jingle, lady o. Get a happy tingle, lady o. Maybe every single care will go with a lady o. Yo lady lady who? Yo lady lady who? Yo lady lady who? Yo lady lady who? You lay, lay, whoo. We really got to go now. Come on, Tio Tio. What time is it? Why, it, it, it's still half past twelve. Oh, my goodness. Something's wrong. Tio Tio, we've got to run. But, oh, Joseph, you said you wanted to learn to car. I do, but I haven't got time now. Wait, children. I'll bake you the biggest apple tart you ever tasted. We haven't time, really. We'll come again. Oh, oh he'll forget. I promise. Goodbye, Grandpa. But don't wait too long to come goodbye, again. Granny. Oh, goodbye. Goodbye. goodbye, darling. Think of us often. You don't know how much it means. They're gone. Always in such a hurry. Oh, I'll never get this carving finished. Uh, I'm beginning to get sleepy already. I am, too. It was nice of them to, to think of us. And wake us up. Perhaps... Won't be so long till next time. Hmm. Poor Granny and Grandpa. We were sorry to leave them. But we just had to get out of the past. We'd have had to stay there ourselves forever. And is that the end of the story, Shirley? Oh, no, Mr. Pryor. When we got out of the past, Light was waiting for us and took us through the most wonderful, exciting adventures. First, we went to see Mr. and Mrs. Luxury. They lived in a great big palace where everybody has everything they want. Everything but the things they really need. And then, Light took us to the land of the future to visit with the children who weren't born yet. That was the most beautiful place of all. It seemed just like heaven. Everything was soft and blue. And you could see for miles and miles. And the children were all dressed in blue, too. And then Father Time came and called out their names. And they sailed down to Earth with him in his boat. And from way down below, you could hear the most wonderful music. It was a song of all the mothers waiting for their children. It was all so beautiful, Mr. Pryor, that sometimes when we were making the scene, I almost cried. And what was the most exciting scene in the picture, Shirley? When Tylette the cat turned the forest against us. Then... When we were going through, those great big trees reached out their arms and tried to catch us. And the vines tried to trip us. 
and the fire chased us, and the river almost swallowed us, but we kept on running and running because we just had to find the bluebird. And did you finally find the bluebird, Shirley? Well, it's a big secret, Mr. Pryor, but I guess I can tell you. In the end, I did find my bluebird, and I hope for everyone that's listening that they find their bluebird, too. And then you'll hear your bluebird sing a song of happy Hi, this is Porchlight's Marketing Associate, Justin Coker. Thank you for listening to WPMT. If you value programming like this, please consider making a donation today at porchlightmusictheater.org. We appreciate your consideration and hope you enjoy the show. Sally, that was beautiful. It's the nicest Christmas present you could have given me. Thank you, Mr. Eddie. And if you want to give me a nice Christmas present... Uh Uh-huh, yes. What? Well, will you please sing a silent night? I will if you'll sing it with me. All right. Eddie, wishing you all the happiest Christmas you ever had. Have you a word for your friend, Shirley? Oh, yes, Mr. Eddie. Dear radio audience, this has been a very exciting Christmas Eve for me. And Mr. Maiderlink, can you hear me away over in France? I just love playing in your wonderful story, The Bluebird. And now, I just want to say to my friends at 20th Century Fox, And to all the neighborhood good golf dealers everywhere, a very Merry Christmas to you and your families. A Merry Christmas, everybody. Good night, Shirley, and Merry Christmas to you. And ladies and gentlemen, remember, it's only in the golf theater where you can meet all your favorite stars. The greatest motion picture stars working together. In the next few weeks, for example, we'll bring you Betty Davis, Spencer Tracy, Humphrey Bogart, Claudette Colbert, Charles Boyer. And be sure to make a date right now for Gulf's big New Year's Eve party here next week with Eddie Cantor, Jean Autry, Joan Blondell, Benita Granville, Mr. Guffey, Eddie Cantor's latest singing discovery, and Oscar Bradley and his Gulf Orchestra. Listen in, won't you? Good. Until then, this is Roger Pryor saying good night for your neighborhood good Gulf dealer, wishing you the best of good health, happiness, and Merry Christmas. Nelson Eddy's current picture for Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer is Balalaika. Oscar Bradley, conductor of the Gulf Orchestra, wishes to express his appreciation for the splendid cooperation of 20th Century Fox's general musical director, Alfred Newman, who composed and conducted the beautiful score of the picture Bluebird, which opens as a roadshow January 19th at the Hollywood Theater in New York City. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. It was during this radio performance that one of the most extraordinary events happened in the history of live radio when a crazed woman made an attempt on Shirley Temple's life. Years later, as Temple recalled, while she was singing Silent Night near the end of the broadcast, a woman arose from her seat and pulled out a handgun, pointing it directly at her. The woman froze just long enough for security to get her. 
It was later discovered that the woman had lost a child on the day it was publicly stated that Temple was born, and she blamed Shirley for stealing her daughter's soul. She hoped that in killing her, it might release her daughter's soul and bring her back to life. What the woman did not know was that Shirley Temple was born in 1928, not 1929, the year of her daughter's birth. In 1940, Shirley starred in two flops at 20th Century Fox, The Bluebird and Young People. Her parents bought out the remainder of her contract and sent her, at age 12, to the Westlake School for Girls, an exclusive country day school in Los Angeles. At 20th Century Fox, Shirley's bungalow was renovated, all traces of her tenure expunged, and the building was reassigned as an office. Shirley Temple would grow up and go on to make successful pictures for other film studios, including Since You Went Away for Selznick International, The Bachelor and the Bobby Soxer at RKO, That Hagen Girl at Warner Brothers, and Fort Apache, starring John Wayne and Henry Fonda, directed by John Ford at Ford's own Argosy Pictures. Following a noteworthy diplomatic career for the U.S. government, Shirley Temple died at age 85 on February 10, 2014, at her home in Woodside, California. Theaters across the country need your support now, more than ever. We hope you'll consider a donation to Porchlight Music Theater today. Just go to porchlightmusictheater.org. Until next time on Classic Musicals from the Golden Age of Radio... I'm Michael Weber. Music